Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. I'll do the wallet cat sign. See, set. Oh, good. Hey, guys. Sorry for being a couple minutes late. I have a pretty serious problem that I've been working on. Um, my butt is too hot. Yep. It's over 300 degrees. <laughs> I'm doing what every other uh, warm-blooded southern man is doing on such a beautiful day. It's Six o'clock in the morning, watching the sun rise, and putting a pork butt on his barbecue. Problem is, it's supposed to be 200 degrees, ah, 225. It's way up there at 300. Very, very worrisome. So I apologize for being distracted. But I have the weight of the world on my pork shoulder. Well, golf yesterday was fantastic. It was nice for the New York Stock Exchange to uh, stop trading on my the only day this year that I took a, an afternoon off. <laughs> oh, interesting. So anyways, hey, let's get going, yo. Today is July 9th, 2015. It's a Thursday. This is your daily Forex trading strategy session brought to you by TradersWay.com, hosted at Forex.today. My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay. It's a ECN that offers traders X, but also energies, metals, stock indices from around the world, and binary options, which I prefer to use for scalping or for hedging cash positions. Hoo-ha! What would you like me to cover today? How can Uncle Wayne help? If you have a request, be known. Aussie dollar, USD yen, USD Swissy. Aussie USD. Kareem, you're so funny. The China crash. Uh -huh. The China crash. It just rallied today. It's funny. The crash. I I call such situations uh, uh, inevitable and needed pullbacks. Crash is a little. Okay, and uh, okay. Everything looks good. All right, so I can do all that. So let's get going. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not indicative of future results. But always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. So good to see you. It's nice to be here at Forex uh, today. Hang on, one of my charts is all messed up. What am I going to do about that yet? I'll mess around with it later. All right, so um, let's start with the Euro USD. Makes sense. Okay, makes sense to start there. And uh, where were we yesterday and what was the trade plan? Let's, let's do a quick test to see if you remember. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. Hugging the bottom of the channel. Yep. Channels up. Yep. Were we at support besides the channel? Yeah, I outlined it here in purple, the psych level. 
And I think it was a daily pivot or something in there, right? And an, a stochastic oscillator, which was just fine. So that meant down, right? <laughs> right? Trick question. Trick question. Yeah, trick question. Uh-huh. So we were at support in an upward channel. And I've been preaching to you for days on staying with the price action. Am I right? So someone left a, a comment on YouTube. They're like, why don't you ever do any trade plans? Why do you always talk about the things you talked about in the past? Well, what the heck was that? What am I supposed to do? Slap you across the face? Hello? Right? No, I mean, what would... <laughs> I don't know. What was that? Right? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping that this is all coming together. I, I think I did everything except tell you to buy it. But I'm trying to get you to think, right, for yourself. Is that what we want? A team of six full but independent traders? Okay. I just want to make sure, uh, you know, nah, nah, it's okay. I just want to make sure we're all on the same clue train. So that moved up, what was that, 150 pips? But I think I said uh, up at 110 to, you know, 110 to 111, right? Something like that. Okay, so now what? Well, I'm interested to see what happens now if we get a pattern like this. No, I know, Armin. I just want to, I mean, we need to, I don't know, let's talk about it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd much rather be a dollar bull, but it doesn't matter. The focus has been to I pay attention to the price action, right? Especially even after the big gap that we had, right? Remember that? Stay true to the price action. Now, if you don't like the direction of the price action, you have a choice, right? You can not trade it. Or trade it as a short term, as your short term strategy. So very often over the years, you'll hear me say, you know, I'm long term short, but short term long. Well, that would be the case where I'm trading the price action. I mean, I can't do anything about the price action, so I either ignore it or just you know, make some money along the way and wait for it to set up. Another way of looking at it is you can spot your way up, but swing your way down meaning each one of these is sort of a day trade, right? Right? And then these could be like a trade that you could possibly be in for a week. All kinds of ways, right? But that's your alpha. You need to make those decisions. Because it's not, you know, the strategy is only relevant if it's your decision. Right? I mean, you need to decide. That's where it comes from. Because what we want is repeatable behavior. 
So you need to decide what you want to do with that. Now, I don't know what the right decision is, so I often have to make my own decisions. So anyways, one of the things that I'm looking at today is whether this pullback here is prime to produce a lower high off of this area. Okay? Resistance, support, maybe resistance again. Genius, genius, genius. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Greek mind. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool, anyways, huh? Ah, just sipping my coffee. Hey, on Forex today, um, I put a, a video up there, uh, 18-minute video, um, which is an overview of MACD. Did you guys see that? Everything you wanted to know about MACD and everything that you didn't know but should know about MACD as a special free bonus. It's right there if you want it. Quick Forex MACD strategy for beginners. Learn how to trade Forex with, Mac, with the MACD indicator. Uh -huh. It's just 18 minutes, but should get your juices flowing. I was just thinking about it. You know, what would the MACD be doing here? Okay, so um, to me, this is like a a, a canary in the uh, in the coal mine because I think if euro dollar turns here, I think they're all going to turn. Okay. So, for example, what's our buddy Yen going to do? Okay. Now, the way I typically play Yen is I like to pay attention to psych and midpoint psych levels. Okay, for example, let's make this 120.50. Oh, there it is. What do you think? Relevant, do you think? Did you catch that one, YJ? Uh-huh. Yeah, and I don't mind. I mean, it's still, it, it's, remember the whole picking bottoms joke? It's still a bottom picker, if you ask me. So, you know, I'd like to see some price action. And again, the time of year makes me less aggressive. If this was the second week of August, 
versus the second week of July, I might behave differently. But I here's what my July brain is thinking. It's going to go like this, and then it's going to come by like this. <laughs> You know, it's going to go up 200 pips. It'll come back 200 pips. Uh, I mean, pfft. do you guys remember last year? Let me give you a summarize, summarization of last year. Euro USD would go up uh, 200 pips in about 10 days. And then it would come back uh, 200. And then it would go up 150. And then it would come back 150. Then it would go up 100, and then it would come back 100. And then it went up 1,000. There you go. So, my uh, my simple brain is telling me this can go up 200, this can come back down 200. No need for me to be all super, you know, crazy aggressive. But, you know, this year is a little different than the last. Um, you know, we have different circumstances this year, right? The Greek issue being the, the biggest one. So um, it's a risk event. It's playing out. So it just, again, tells me that uh, I don't have to be the first one in this trade, right? You think I should be in this trade all alone? Nah. I think I'll wait for others. Yeah, but... You know, the the interest rate issue, that's that's down the line. You'll see, you know, everyone's 100% sure they're going to raise interest rates in September. And then we'll get to September and they're like, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe it'll be maybe December. <laughs> they're so brilliant. Right. <laughs> I don't I don't know who cares. Who cares what they say? It's those guys that make the market inefficient and allows me to make profit. I think it's even funny that it gets debated. All right. So... We're getting pretty close to key levels and psych levels. And, you know, I drew the purple zone yesterday as sort of like a, an area to watch. And we're still kind of in there, a little farther down, but, you know, I'm okay. Nothing's changed. I, I see that we're playing the 120 area. That's cool, man. Now, 120 is a very interesting psych level, isn't it? Monthly M1 is a little lower at 2025, and we got down to what, 2050? Uh, I think it'd be cool to pick this up at 1950. I think that would be totally sweet. What do you think, guys? Can we get it down another 100 pips? Okay, so one thing to be watching for now, let's do this in a different color. Um, we're at about a 50% retracement of the last uh, time's move. And a trend trader would start to think that it would come down relatively soon, don't you stink? Right? Isn't that, isn't that a swing trade that I've been teaching you to watch? Now, if the market wants to reverse on the 2050, then it can. 
but I'm still going to watch the fib levels. And if we end the day, uh, let me make this green. If we end the day up here, then that could change things. Should I should I guess that it's going to do that? Nah. Why don't we just let it do it? If it wants to reverse here, it's going to reverse here. Okay. So the key is now drop into a 15-minute chart and wait for a pattern. What would you like to use for an entry? Because currently it kind of looks like this. See how easy the trading has been? Okay, let's go over the basics that I've been teaching you. Okay, Fibonacci retracement, higher high. Take the previous resistance, drag it across, there's your buy zone. Makes a higher high, take the previous resistance, make it a buy zone. Right? Is that, is that a skill that you are starting to pick up? So this is what I say to the person that says, well, how, Wayne, how come you don't like put me into trades? How come you don't give exact signals? Well, first of all, you didn't pay me any money. <laughs> right? You didn't pay me any money. So, uh, and then what's the next one? Well, then I would also say to the guy, well, why don't you do that now? That thing that I've taught you over and over again, and I just showed you once again an example of it, well, why don't you just do that now? Right? Does that sound like a fair plan, guys? If you think it's going to reverse and head down, let it reverse, sell the retrace. Let it make a lower low, sell the, the retracement. Let it make a lower low. And then what? Sell the retracement. How about that? Because <laughs> at least I'm at least I'm honest with you. I don't know where it's going to go. Oh, we have some support and resistance, and we have some is, and we got some fundamentals and stuff. But um, it seems to me it could reverse here. What are some of the reasons? Well, we came up and touch the 618 Fibonacci retracement. Not at 121.50, at 121.59.7. Seven tenths of a pip. What is that, a point? Seven points of a pip. Because a pip is a percentage in points, but then you have a percentage of a percentage of points. So anyways, um, so with this, if you are doing a swing trading strategy, you would look for a reversal here to sell because this move overnight is exactly 618 Fibonacci retracement. So a swing trader, now again, do I know if this is going to fall? No. 
Has the trend for several days been down? Yeah. Was yesterday's move bearish? Yes. Is this a particular Fibonacci, uh, a particular strategy that has worked in the past? Yes. 618 Fibonacci retracement would predict a 1382 Fibonacci extension to the downside. Yeah. It's all plausible. Could it go up to 122? Hell yeah. But uh, less likely, I think. So to really make my odds better, on a smaller time frame now, like a 15-minute chart, I should probably wait for a lower low, lower high, and then sell it. With that in mind, on, which would be more of a swing trade on an hourly or four-hour chart. Whoop. Okay, so I wouldn't sell it now. I mean, you could, you as long as you're aggressive. On a five-minute chart, you already got the lower low, lower high, and you might be looking for this. That's your decision, my friend. Right? Someone else may want to wait for it to do that. Cool. But it makes you, you know, it begs the question do you think it's going to go down to 119.50? That is a decision that you must make for yourself. And that is the monthly S2. And I would be very interested in looking for a bullish reversal pattern at monthly S2. That would be interesting to me. Igor says, where's my moving averages? Well, I don't need moving averages. I'm trying to simplify things, right, Igor? So, like, what I've seen, and it might even be you, Igor, um, in the last few trade plans, I'll say, well, you know, if you look at this, that turned bullish, and you're like, oh, but the, oh, but the moving average. Oh, if you look at that, that, oh, the, the moving average. It seems like moving averages are talking you out of trades, not talking you into trades. And one of the things you might need to work on is multiple time frames. Right? We should probably look at that. Um, because, you know, very often we're looking at a trend that's been down for a while. And, and you're fixated on a 15-minute moving average crossover. But, you know, so you see, you see a tree, but you can't see the forest. And that's why I say you should always start with making your decision whether you're a bull or a bear. And you can do it, just open up a daily chart and say, is it still bearish? Now, I think if we were doing this, I would, right? But we're a long ways from that. Sure, eventually it will reverse, and I might get caught in here and then have a, a, you know, a, a bad day, but I couldn't possibly have a bad week. Right? At some point, I walk away. So I just say, am I, is, the, is the price action still bearish? Yes. So I'll stay a bear, and I'm done, strategy-wise, right? And there's no, like, oh, but, 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 you know, a but is for my barbecue. And I hope it's cooled down, man. I got only one burner going. 
I got his lows, and if if that's if I can't do that, then I got to move over to the charcoal, and that's even more difficult to keep low. But so, anyways, I look at that and, I, and I'll, I'll make a decision. Do I want to buy this or sell this? So I could possibly say I'm a bear. Done. Next. Now what? If the moving averages are bothering you, stop using the moving averages. But if I had a moving average chart, let's say, uh, let's pick a different one. Okay, here's another chart, same thing, 15 minutes. What do you want to do on this if you want to sell? That's, that's all I care about. Oh, but Wayne, what if it goes up another 100 pips? Couldn't care two hoots. Do I, do I sound bothered? What if it goes up 50 pips? Well, you better not be short. <laughs> right? So you better have a trigger. Got my hands in my pocket, got my fingers on the trigger. So, I don't mind. I almost want it to go up. Now, what's the trigger? Is it going to be the 200 EMA? Is that going to be my trigger? We, I don't care about Stokes at this point. Is the 200 EMA going to be my trigger? No, it's a target. 200 EMA is a target, not an entry. So if you were trading the triple bottom, high, 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 low, look how beautiful the trading's been. It's just ridiculous. A triple bottom with a higher high? Oh, snap. Look at MACD, guys. In that scenario, your target is the 200 DMA. So... If I'm a bear, the 200 EMA is not a target, so I can get rid of it. So what's left now? I remove trend from this 15-minute chart. What's left? I have price, and I have market. MACD, overbought and oversold conditions for the market. Stochastics, overbought and oversold conditions for price. So I have the 2155 and I have the 58. The 58 represents price action. The 2155 represents market forces. Which one's going to turn first if this turns bearish? Okay. So Make a decision. What do you want to do? Do you want to wait for the 21 to cross below the 55? If, if you want that, then, then you're going to have to get some... It's going to take a long time, isn't it? Or do you want to take the 5.8, cross it up here, have it make a lower low, then have it come back, and by then the 21.55 will cross, and you'll short a retracement back into the cloud, so to speak. Which one do you want to do? Doesn't matter to me what your answer is. It'd be one or the other. So where is all this likely to happen? Two choices. I, th I my, for a guess here. Uh, um, 
Okay, I told you when I trade the yen, I, I like the psych levels. So let's throw those down. How do you feel about 122? Okay. So I'm going to eyeball one of those areas. And I could take a 5 a cross at either level. I could be done here. Done. Now I'm waiting. On a 15-minute chart, I prefer if stochastics is way overbought up here and then coming back down. That's what I prefer. So I think what I would like to see is New York pick up and then sort of near the London close, we short in extreme market conditions. And everyone that's been long all day starts getting out. And we, tomorrow we get one of these. Here's London Open tomorrow. Oh, snap. Am I, am I thinking about this afternoon and tomorrow morning already? Way oil be MR fish. Good plan. Good. Please insert five dollars for the next trade plan. Please insert five dollars for the next trade plan. <laughs> hey, why don't we just keep going? Yeah, it's true. I yeah, cigars, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you have to enter it in quarters. <laughs> yeah, totally, eh, Bob? All right, cool. So, there's something to watch. Do I have to trade it? Nope. There's a bit of stochastic divergence going on here, right? It could turn here now. Could. It may. It may not. But why do you wait? Like I've always said, if you're not waiting for something, you're not trading properly. If you're staring at your charts to, like, find a trade, you're not trading properly. Do you guys understand that? I need to like stand on top of the mountain and shout it for all to hear. If you're looking at your charts to find a trade, you're not doing it properly. You're about to lose money. Do you understand that? Oh, I wonder, oh, I think I'll throw down a short and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, sounds, sounds good. Yeah, um, hi, ma'am. Um, I'm, I'm the surgeon, and uh, um, I thought we'd just throw down, like, a, uh, a, um, a brain surgery and, and see what happens. <laughs> If that doesn't work, I don't know. Let's 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 uh, let's cut out the heart and see if that helps. Let's just kind of wing it. You know, I don't really like to have a trade plan, or a <laughs> I don't like to have a medical plan, ma'am. I just like to go for it. So we'll usually start the heart, and work away to her brain, but I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with it. It's just like it seems like if you're doing something serious, uh, you'd be taking it serious. If you're a surgeon, right, you'd be probably ser pretty serious at what you do.
All right. So anyways, um, yeah, I think this would be, oops, I think this would be interesting. Say does that stop? All right, let's do another one. We had a lot of requests for Ozzy. <coughs> Excuse me. Where's my Ozzy traders? Uh, Zeal asks about uh, oscillators and stuff, and I'm moving on here, but um, have you seen the um, videos that are on YouTube about how to time your trading using oscillators, leading and lagging indicators and stuff? There's like two, two on oscillators and I think two on like different Fibonacci's and stuff. It's a timing your Forex trade series that I did on YouTube. I think each video has been viewed over 100,000 times. I think one of them is even 200,000. Um, that would be a great place to start. You, you've seen them? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so your, I think your question here is when do you ignore them? Um, I, don't, I don't tend to ever ignore them. But... You have to understand, I suppose, when to use them. And you might be saying the same thing, but um, uh, it's not the same thing. Right, so again, <clears throat> when do you ignore them? Well, I don't tend to ignore them, but I'm trying to think of an, uh, a way to answer that. If I'm not at support and resistance, I'm probably going to ignore the stochastics because I'm going to ignore the trade. I mean, so I, I don't know. There's, there's not a good way to answer that. I think when you're putting together a trade plan, you take everything into consideration. Right, and and then you know, I'll look. <clears throat> I might make a decision on a four-hour chart to be long-term short, but then on a on a fifteen-minute chart, I'll be short-term long. And am I ignoring these things? No. In fact, I'm trying to line them up, and then getting them to line up, you're going to have to go one against the other. And you know, I don't know. So you know, when do I ignore them? I think if I want to ignore them, I would just get rid of them. So I don't know if I ever ignore them, but I might not use them, which is not necessarily the same thing you're saying. Okay. All right, so what's going on here? Okay, let's uh, let's look at this on a different chart. Okay, reverse pivots. Okay. Price action has changed over time, hasn't it? Do you think that's relevant? Igor says he picked the bottom, and obviously my joke yesterday is that um, if you try to develop a career of picking bottoms, then um, eventually your trading is going to stink. Um, that's the joke. 
the seriousness of it is you shouldn't do it. What you should be doing is when you're at, at identify support, for example, and you want to be long, you wait for a reversal pattern. So all joking aside, that's what you should be doing. This whole idea that, oh, I picked the bottom. You know what? I'm A, I hope you made money. B, I'm glad you were successful. C, you'll blow up your trade account eventually. Right? Well, it's like, I don't, because, you know, you, like you said, oh, I was dead right yesterday. and Oh, I picked the bottom yesterday. Oh, good. And uh, six months from now, you'll blow up your trading account, probably picking tops and bottoms. What you should be doing, and, uh, because my point yesterday was it'd be degenerate gambling to just assume, even though this has been down technically and fundamentally forever, that you should buy it low. It's just a f fool's game. Right, Sean brings up the other one I said, right? No glory in Forex. So, I think what I told you yesterday is your investors that are looking over the trade history, they're not going to see that you picked tops and bottoms and that you did it well and you're the world's greatest bottom picker. <laughs> just sounds so bad when I said. Um, all they see is profit and loss, risk reward, um, average this, average that. But there's no like, Oh, well, he reverses the market, you know. He waits for the market to fall, and then he's the first one to buy it back in. Like, there's no subjectiveness in the statistics, right? So what you should be doing now, I, how about this? Now let's turn this all around. So now I might have made you mad. But let's add to the good. You're you are able to see support and resistance. Okay? We can walk away with a positive note, right? You were able to see it coming. So therefore, if you can have the patience and discipline to wait for a reversal pattern, you may be uh, better able to trade it with lower risk. And that's the name of the game. Okay? So let's say you bought it here. Good trade. Let's say you bought it here. Bad trade. What's the difference in price? None. You see that? One's a good trade, one's a bad trade. They're the same price. One's high risk, one's low risk. Same price, same plan, same reason. One is better than the other, and it will not go in your statistics. Except you're going to be wrong more more often than not by here. That's where it'll come into the statistics. And that's why I say if you're like, oh, uh, I'm going to buy this because it's the reversal pivot. Okay, you're right this time. You're right next time. You're right the next time after that. And then you're wrong, 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 wrong. Because that's the real problem, too, with trading. Haven't you noticed that sometimes, you know, if you're right two or three times in a row, you're like, man, I really got it figured out, even though it might have been the exact wrong thing. You got lucky three times in a row. So what? how many times do you have to be wrong before you realize that um, these first three trades were luck? Seven or eight times you need to be wrong, right? And then you're like, oh, my gosh. Right? I mean, it's the worst thing to make money on a bad trade. 
I mean, it's the worst thing that will ever happen to you. Is that you make money on a bad trade. You might not even know it's a bad trade. Um, and, and, what, and it takes a while to figure it out. I'd rather you lose money on a bad trade than make money on a bad trade. Because if you, if you touch the stove and it's hot and, it, and you burn yourself, you're like, holy crap. I will not touch that hot stove again. That, and that's a good thing, right? So, I don't want you, Igor, to say, I want to buy this because it's a reversal area. Oh, you're right. Oh, you are correct. It is a reversal zone. But that's not, our, that's not the name of the game. The name of the game is to identify support and resistance properly. Step two, look for reversal patterns. Step three, enter on a retracement. Step four, buy a yellow Lamborghini. Reds for Ferraris, Igor. How about a gunmetal gray Murcielago with fluorescent orange um, accents? And I would also throw in sort of a a um, sort of a glossy matte combo on the gunmetal. So some of it is matte gunmetal and some of it's glossy gunmetal. And then just like the brake calipers are fluorescent orange and maybe just some things around the intakes, you know, just a little, a little something, something. Yeah, a helicopter would be nice, yeah. Yeah, Hartman's like, hmm, not bad. Do you, do you go for the um, the carbon fiber, Armin? Yeah, see? It's classy, huh? Yeah, some carbon fiber in there. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yeah, if I were me, that's what I would do. And the other thing I would do if I were me is I would set up the next short. Do -do 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 -do, which I already have, if you can see here. That's what this is. Right? So... Bada bing, bada boom. Short term long to long term short. Next. So we got some weekly jobless claims. Let me go to Forex dot today. Forex today. Do, 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 do. So some ki some kitty cat. Wait, that came out already, didn't it? That's that's out already, is it? Annualized housing starts two hundred and two. Oh, the how, the the index is coming out. All right, hang on.
297,000 for claims above the 275,000 expected prior flies 1,000 higher to 282,000 continuing claims 2.33 million above the 2.25 million expected prior flies slightly higher given the new housing price index 0.2% is two tenths is one tenth higher than expected year over year 1.2% is up one tenth from the prior oh that's surprising huh Two, two ninety-seven. That's bad. Who got laid off? Let me actually pull up the report. Because that's how I roll, yo. You guys want to actually see the government report? Ah, uh, hang on. Let's see if I can learn anything new. This is the stuff that newspapers don't do, right? <laughs> actually, look at the data. Um, hmm. Initial jobless claims 297, increase of 15,000 from the previous revised level. The four week moving average is just under 280,000, so this is really high. There's no special factors impacting this week's initial claims. Well, I'm going to have to take a little off the top for my next NFP, that's all. No state was triggered on okay. newly discharged veterans, the largest in New Jersey. <clears throat> Excuse me, New Jersey. Look at that. Largest increase in initial claims for the week came out of New Jersey. Holy smokes. Somebody went out of business there, huh? Where was that? Citigroup did some layoffs or something? Uh, and Massachusetts, that's amazing. These are big numbers for those states. Look at Connecticut. Connecticut! Hedge funds, huh? Holy sm Look at that, guys. Connecticut had the same amount as California, st statistically speaking, you know, number-wise, but percentage-wise, I mean, that, that would be a large percentage for Connecticut versus a small one for California. I mean, California is a big state. Connecticut is a tiny, tiny state. Wow. Huh. Well, oil deep. Well, I don't know what to gain, uh, gather from that, but it's interesting. Uh, uh, let's just read a little more and see if we can learn something. So we're creeping back up on our averages, 273, then 275, now 279. It's not good. The average is going up. Last year it was 311.
Huh. Well, there's no smoking gun here. Yeah, I'm just cruising through this. Um, oh, here we go. Layoffs in the education service, huh? Accommodation, food and transport, warehousing. Wow. Massachusetts, layoff in the transportation and warehousing. Same thing. California, service sector, makes sense. Education, educational services industry. Oh, is this, um, it's summer school. <laughs> Why wouldn't they seasonally adjust for that? Look at it, Massachusetts, Connecticut. It's like the, where the biggest brains in America are. Uh, no comment on uh, Kentucky. <laughs> no, that's what it actually says. It. No comment. Yeah, um. All right. All right. Jersey. So you got Princeton in New Jersey. You have MIT and Harvard. Go Crimson um, in Massachusetts. Uh, it's interesting. All right. Cool. All right. So I guess we get all those jobs back, right? Ovid. Yeah, that's my school. Do, 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 do. Come on, come on now. Yeah, you can see, you know, <clears throat> trans uh, was it uh, education on some service, uh, serv food service industries. So the kids leave uh, leave Massachusetts, and you don't need people with fast food restaurants and stuff. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know, Demeter. I can't get into the seasonally adjusted stuff, but it's generally for for things like uh, farm employment and stuff. Yeah, you'd think that would be adjusted, but can you please let me know a web page which gives an overview or summary of fundamental data in the USA? Well, put it this way, Thomas. Uh, you can read the newspaper. You can pick one. Pick one. Uh, Financial Times, Wall Street Journal. Investor Business Daily, okay? Um, but all the data is available, so you could do it yourself. Like I just did, I just pulled up the weekly jobless claims, you know, you know so on and so forth. Some of them, you know, trading economics can get complicated, though, right, Adam? No? So... All right, guys. Well, let me go. Um, it's been it's been good. It's been real. Uh, hopefully, it's been helpful. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please give it a like and a comment. Would you do that for me? I'd appreciate it. I'm going to spend another half an hour to 45 minutes uploading the video to YouTube and stuff. Um, but uh, like I said, if you're on Forex dot today, and uh, let's say you're on the uh, home page, let me go there. Um, here's a good review, quick Forex MACD strategy update, and then of course there's all these other videos that are up there as well, all the live market stuff. So maybe you want to click on that as well while you wait. So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Thank you for being on my team. You make me want to be a better trader. Cheers. <laughs>